843, we're back with a live shot from Century Plaza Hotel and Spa. And no stranger to this show is Dr. Shimmy Kang joining us once again. And given the college admission scandal that has made headlines over the past couple of weeks, we are talking about the idea of privilege to bypass the system where parents looking out for their kids getting into elite schools is one factor, but also the potentially unproductive pressure parents are putting on their kids. When you saw this story, was it more parental pressure? Was it more privilege? What stood out to you? I think it's all of it, really. It's a perfect storm, um, but we do know that there's something called the price of privilege or affluenza, so um, diseases of wealth, really. We know children from upper class, upper middle class even families are more at risk for things like anxiety, depression, addiction, narcissism, and perfectionism. Um, some of that's driven by parents. Um, I would say ego and fear driven um, parents who have a lot of resources to over schedule, over smother, and it really um, impacts the child, but also the bigger culture, um, high pressured schools or society that really values who you are on the outside um, versus what you are like on the inside all feeds into this. So it's really not the child's fault. Um, it's a variety of factors coming together. So how do we address it? Because, uh, you know, I was saying to you when I first saw this story, I said, you know what, this is a consequence of a culture of comparison. Yeah. You want to have the best school for your kid. You want to have the, you know, the, the best status that, that could stand out there. As a parent, how do we become aware of it and how do we address it? Here the legal system is keeping people accountable, but on a day-to-day -day at home, what can we do? It's really important, I think, to start with really trying not to judge. It's hard, um, but really these are parents who I say are doing all the wrong things for the right reason, meaning um, they're trying to do the best for their child, but it's misguided. Um, down the wrong path um, and it really leads to this aggressive over controlling micromanaging snowplow tiger shark whatever you want to call it um, authoritarian parenting style which really robs the child from their own ability to have self-motivation to their own ability to solve problems and develop those really important character skills um, that responsibility that respect that sense of connection that they're going to need to survive and succeed in the real world so they're actually really really interfering with their child's long-term success. And as you describe all of those traits for and character building moments for the kids, I think, and you know, advice we had on this show was sometimes you just got to let your kid fail. Yes. And if they apply for that school they wanted and they didn't get it, you know, that's a part of life to build the resiliency. So I'll ask you this, as a parent, how do you challenge your child but not overwhelm them to the point of stress and anxiety in their own life? Right, so when you go back to parenting research and really what leads to a successful child, it really boils down to adaptability or resilience, right? Survival of the fittest isn't the fastest or the strongest, but the one that can adapt to an ever-changing world. So I go back to the dolphin metaphor, really, and that's the balance between the aggressive parenting that is too pushy and too micromanaging, but you also don't want the opposite, that jellyfish or permissive parent that isn't giving any guidance, isn't talking about university, isn't talking about SATs, isn't talking about how to behave or get an award or, or move ahead in life. So you want that balanced um, relationship. When you think of the dolphin, the animal is strong, it's firm. So you have goals, you have expectations, you have a vision with your child, collaboratively, shoulder to shoulder, flexible, based on what is important to them. Um, and you're what we call authoritative. So you're giving the um, that authority as the adult, as the guide, but you're not stepping in and doing everything for them. That style we know leads to kids who have better mental health, who have better success, better adaptability, who are socially conscious, who have better character, um, and really ultimately success. So I say it's simple, but not easy. You know, you don't want to be too pushy, you don't want to be too easy. Um, that fine balance, but simple is not easy, actually. It's tough, and I make mistakes all the time. Is there one quick tip you can give to parents that want to follow and achieve these outcomes you're describing? of collaborative parenting, what you can do every single day with your child to stay connected, challenge them, but challenge them in a productive way. Yeah, we say the three things that we want to do is make sure that they have enough downtime. So a good lifestyle is really important because if everyone's sleep deprived, you're going to fall into aggression or that absence parents, that fight or flight response. Um, you want to have the bond. Um, the bond is essential. So just pay attention, be present and let your child play. Play is how we learn from mistakes. Play is how we learn through trial and error. Like you said, they fail, they get up, they, they 
realize. So young children need to play, adults, children, teenagers play by taking electives, making mistakes, writing their own essays, figuring it out. They can always ask for help if needed, but really give them that sense of play mindset, which is a growth mindset. Great tangible takeaways right there. Dr. Shimi Kang joining us on the BT Couch. And by the way, she said get a good stress ball now that I'm a parent too. So it's working. Okay. It's working. Serenity now. Yes. It's all about, right? Listen, we'll take a break. Final check-in with Russell K.